Hey guys, Rob Skiba here. So this is going to be a short response to both Kent Hoven and Robert Sungenis. Uh I'm going to make a longer response specifically to Kent Hoven. Uh, so stay tuned for that. But this is a response to a video that came out and uh, everybody telling me, hey, Kent Hoven's accepted your challenge. He's going He wants to debate you and Kent Hoven's after you and all this stuff people have been sending me. Uh, since apparently this video came out right here on July 8th, 2018, uh, Flat Earthers Challenge Accepted. But the first thing I want to point out before I go any further is that I never challenged Ken Hoven to a debate. I know there have been a lot of people trying to push us both into a debate, really going all the way back to 2015. In fact, anybody who's followed me on Facebook or YouTube or listened to me on radio shows or Google Hangouts, I have a, actually a very long track record of saying I have no desire, I have no need, I don't even want to debate Ken Hovind. And it's not because I'm afraid of him. I'm definitely not afraid of him. It's just I don't have any need or desire to do it. I've, I've already said everything I need to say. So all this, uh, you know, Rob Skiba's challenged you or whatever, that's all coming from other people. It's not coming from me. But anyway, this video is a response to the challenges that I have received that have come from uh, Ken Hovind's office or from his people uh, or from Dr. Robert Sungenis. They have challenged me to a debate. And in that regard, almost a month ago now, I got an email from somebody named Rhonda Atri. I think is how you say the last name. Apologize if I got that wrong. Uh, secretary at drdino.com, to whom it may concern, Dr. Sunjanis recently published a book entitled Flat Earth, Flat Wrong. Dr. Hoven has volunteered to host a flat earth debate between Mr. Skiba and Dr. Sunjanis on his YouTube channel and serve as moderator. Would Mr. Skiba be interested? Dr. Sunjanis has agreed to the debate and format. I look forward to hearing back from you. And on June 27th, I responded by sending this email. I said, hello, Rhonda. Thank you for writing and for considering me for this. I apologize for the delayed response. I have been traveling. First, let me say I feel an enormous sense of gratitude toward both Dr. Hoven and Dr. Sunjanis for the roles both have played in influencing my firm belief in the literal truths of Scripture, which has only further solidified my walk with Yahuwah and ushered me into a life of full-time ministry. Dr. Hoven's work in exposing the lies of the textbooks had a profound impact on me growing up, giving me the confidence to take a stand for creation over evolution in my public schools and elsewhere. And most recently, Dr. Sunjanis's work on the principle and Galileo was wrong has been a great addition to my tool belt. So please convey my sincere appreciation to both of them for this. That said, my knee-jerk response to this challenge is that I really have no time, need, nor even any desire to debate the topic, as I've already put out well over 100 videos on the subject. I've done dozens of radio interviews, written hundreds of pages worth of blogs, and have said about all that needs to be said already. Thus, as of this year, I have been moving on to other more pressing obligations, which are much closer in line with my original calling of developing a TV series. We've also recently had to deal with a house fire, and the aftermath of which is now taking up quite a bit of my already severely limited time, putting me behind schedule with other things I need to get done. And on top of all of that, I have a very busy conference travel schedule between now and the end of November. So, you know, <laughs> all of this, everybody wants to challenge me to a debate deal. I'm like, where were you guys like back in January? <laughs> I could have, I had a lot more time you know, last year and going into the beginning of this year, now I'm literally entering the busiest season of pretty much every year, usually from August, July, August till uh, about November is like my craziest, busiest time of the year. And so now all of a sudden everybody's hitting me wanting to, to debate and do all this stuff. And I'm like, ah, I, go, I don't have any time for this. So needless to say, something like this would be really low on my priority list, but I confess it is a very tempting offer nonetheless, and one I shall certainly pray about. And this is in reference to uh, the challenge to debate Dr. Robert Sungenis. And let me just say, I have tremendous respect for Dr. Sungenis. Um, we disagree, for sure, uh, but of all of the people that have attacked us in the flat earth community, this is the first person that I've seen who has actually taken the time to do not just a little bit of research, but a lot of research. 
mostly everybody says this is a waste of time. They never look at anything. If they watch any video, they're watching it with glazed eyes and they're hearing Charlie Brown. Wark, 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 wark. <laughs> they're not hearing anything. They don't read anything. Uh, it, they're like in a coma, just staring out into the space. Um, and that is painfully obvious by the types of questions that they will ask and the type of comments that they will make. You immediately know this person hasn't done any research at all. Uh, that is not the case with Dr. Sunjanis. He has clearly taken the time to read through quite a bit of content, to watch probably a lot of videos. I can't imagine he watched all 150 or 160 videos that I've put out, uh, especially since my videos tend to be between an hour and three hours long. But it is obvious, at least from what I've skimmed, that he has, in fact, read or, and watched a fair amount of my stuff. So uh, kudos to Dr. Sunjanis for that. And I think he's to be commended for that. So, uh, yeah, thank you. That is awesome. I have tremendous respect. I even told my wife the other day, I said, you know, I have a feeling I, he and I could be friends. You know, I, I like him. I enjoy watching his stuff. I, I do get passionate when I watch. I have to constantly stop the video and rant for about 10 minutes about why I believe you're wrong, <laughs> as I'm sure you probably did with me. But um, I appreciate his zeal for the scriptures. I appreciate his attitude. He does, you know, he gets passionate just like any anybody else. But I haven't seen him be nearly as antagonistic as Kent Hovind and others have been uh, toward us. He has been showing a measure of respect for us and not just brushing it off, even correcting other people when they uh, talk about various aspects of this subject and, he, and he, he'll correct them and say, well, wait a minute. It's not as simple as you think it is. Um, he has gained a measure of respect for um, both the biblical flat earthers as well as the secular guys that are out there doing tests and things like that. So um, I actually very much look forward to engaging, if not in a debate, certainly in dialogue with Dr. Sunjanis, and I can see that in our near future. But let's go ahead and look at Kent Hovind's challenge, and I'm going to comment on a few things as we go through this. The Flat Earthers will submit their answers to my questions below that I'm about to give you, and we will discuss these topics only for the first debate, and then we'll go on to number two if we have to. I think this is a complete waste of time, but I'm going to do it out of Christian love. Okay. Nah, not interested in your questions. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not going to do it on your terms. I don't, I don't think I've ever met Rob Skiva. I don't know. If I have, Rob, you said I'm, you're, I influenced you greatly. Good. Now I'm going to try to influence you again to get off this dumb kick you're on, okay? Um, if you're going to have any influence on me, Kent, at all, you need to do it the way you did it when I was a, a, a teenager. And it's from the Bible. You need to show me from the Bible anything that even remotely supports your little toy ball, you know, the little globe thing you got there. You're going to have to prove that to me from the Bible. That's the only way you're going to have an influence on me because that's the way you had an influence on me years and years ago uh, with the issue of creationism. I've answered the biblical side of this topic five times on this channel. We did this with uh, Edric, uh, what, two years ago in uh, Pensacola. Where, Pensacola. Yeah. I've done one just a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. The Bible does not teach the earth is flat like you guys say, okay? We talked about the four corners of the earth. Is it a tetrahedron? Talked about God having wings like a chicken. He's got a chicken. Does he have feathers? We talked about all that. I'm not going to get into that. This is going to be the scientific part. Okay. Not if you're going to debate me, bro. You could debate anybody else and whatever you want, but if there's ever going to happen, if, if, if a debate between you and I is ever going to happen, it will be on the Bible. Period. What does the Bible say? That's the influence you had on me when I was a young person. You claim the Bible teaches a, a round earth round works both ways for circle and ball, just, you know, uh, and that it's spinning. I'm going to say, okay, where? Show us where it says that God spun the earth up to a thousand miles an hour and hurled it around the sun, 66,000 miles per hour, whatever it is. That's your challenge. We will do this. If we're going to debate, it will be on the Bible. Our deal's off. I'm not interested. I don't care about all your other challenges here. I want to know what I'm fighting against. Okay. I'll put it right here in writing for you. Here's the open challenge. And for me to accept your challenge to debate, because I never challenge you, uh, you're mentioning my name and everybody's saying that he's challenging me. Okay, whatever. Whoever's challenging whoever, I don't have time for any of this, frankly. I've got way better things to do. Uh, I've been trying to move on from this. I've said about everything that I need to say. Uh, I'm just repeating myself these days. So you know, I have no need nor any desire 
really to do this, and I certainly don't have the time for it. Uh, th and I don't have the time just for one person, never mind two. And since Dr. Sunjanis, through your office, uh, uh, challenged me first, and now I'm hearing that you want to debate me, here's my counteroffer. And that is that I will take the winner. You need to debate, if you want to debate me, you need to debate Robert Sunjanis first. And the topic is defend your cosmological worldview from the Bible. All three of us claim to be Bible-believing Christians, and we believe that we should take the Bible literally, uh, except for when you're on Michael Rood's show. So that's what's on the table for debate. I will be willing to host a debate between both of you first on my radio show. If you don't want to do it on my show, that's fine. I'm just putting it out there as an offering. If you'd rather do it somewhere else, that's cool. But I'm not going to debate anybody until you guys debate each other first. Here's the topic. Does the Earth describe a heliocentric or a geocentric Earth? That's the topic for the debate that I want Dr. Kent Hoven and Dr. Sunjanis to discuss. And then I will be willing to debate the winner. And just to be frank, I think that um, <laughs> I'm just going to say, Brother Hoven, um, you are one that is fond of saying we need to have a ready defense an answer for the hope that lies within us and why we believe what we believe in the scriptures. So if that's the case and you're going to go up against Dr. Sunjanus, you better have a better answer for heliocentricity in the Bible than this. Uh, I got a question from another uh, flat earther who uh, wants to ask you if you can provide one heliocentric verse from the Bible. One, one verse that, you know, uh, we can use to uh, show that the okay. Earth is orbiting well, the sun. Sure. Or the sun is... A bigger picture here. I think, obviously, some of your friends are obsessed with this flat Earth stuff, and I think it's a, a complete waste of time. Even if it's true, it's a waste of time because there are much more important topics. So, if nothing else, this is distracting Christians on, yeah. on, on nonsense stuff. It, it's, a, it's a useless topic. And the flat Earth. Uh, uh, and stationary Earth, geocentric theory, I think are A, distractions. I think they're seriously wrong scientifically. I do think they're- But what about biblically? One one verse. Biblically, one that's verse. my point. <clears throat> if you said, pass me back a verse. bottle of water, I would pass you back a bottle of water while we're going north at 70 miles an hour. Well, so it's not a contradiction to the Bible. One verse that supports heliocentricity. <clears throat> When God created the heaven and the earth and everything in it, the earth is, the earth is one of the planets going now, around the remove, sun. Remove <clears throat> the heliocentricity from that verse. Okay. Can you show and me just, one verse that proves geocentricity? Geocentricity? I think the earth is the center of God's attention. Now the, the, I think it's dividing Christians. I think it's unnecessary. I think it's seriously wrong scientifically. But one verse for heliocentricity. Give me one verse to computers. There aren't any verses on computers. Heliocentricity is only 500 years old. The uh, no, no, no. That, you're talking about the uh, Aristotle, the argument uh, of um, Galileo and these guys. The Catholic Church talked uh, geocentricity. Right. Geocentricity means geo means Earth. The Earth is the center. The Sun. The, the, here's Can I show you this. No, no, I don't want to get in. I don't want to discuss this whole topic. There's hundreds of people here that want to discuss other things. This is a complete waste of time, in my humble, humble opinion. Okay. Now, the as I as I mentioned at the beginning of your question, this is a this is dividing Christians. Serious. Otherwise, godly people that would get along on everything else are arguing, spending time arguing on this instead of, I think, much more important topic. And the world is laughing at the flat earthers. They're laughing at them. Mr. Kenhoven, I love you. I know. But um. But I'm right. You still have to give me one verse on heliocentricity. I don't have one verse that teaches heliocentricity. I don't have one verse that teaches there are nine planets either. There are nine if you count Pluto. I don't have one verse that teaches computers. The Bible doesn't deal with the topic. Yeah. So listen, bro. Uh, you better do a lot better than that. If you don't, then if you happen to agree to debate Robert Sunjanus, it's going to be like a Mike Tyson fight. You're going down in the first round and he'll be wiping the mat with your face and your notes and everything else. Um, so my prediction, and I'd love to see you prove me wrong, Dr. Hoven. My prediction is that you will either decline 
to debate him, in which case Dr. Sunjanis wins by default, and I'll debate Dr. Sunjanis. If you decide to debate him, my prediction is he's going to clean your clock, man. <laughs> Sorry, I know you've been like the reigning champion in debates, got a hundred and something debates under your belt. And, I, and I've seen you be very successful in debate. On this one, debating heliocentricity versus geocentricity in the Bible, I think Dr. Sunjanis is going to clobber you, in which case I will then be debating Dr. Sunjanis. So here are the topics and the way that I would say the debate needs to go. You know, somebody else is free to disagree and come up with another plan. But my suggestion would be that the topics, you know, the, the main topic is, does the Bible describe a heliocentric or geocentric earth? And the points that I would say you would need to address in your debate is, what does the Bible say about the firmament? Does the Bible describe a heliocentric or geocentric earth? And does the Bible describe the earth as circular and flat or as a globe? Now, I know in the case of both of you, you both believe that it is a globe. So you probably don't need to do that one. But I'm putting these three bullet points here to say this is what I'm going to agree to debate. Because here's the thing, Kent. If you can't defend heliocentricity from the Bible, that's an easy one, okay? Uh, there's no point. If you can't even do that, there's no point in me wasting my time trying to deal with the rest of the issues of the earth. So, you know, take baby steps here. Let's show us what you, show us what you've got. Go up against Brother Sunjanus and see if you can at least defend heliocentricity. We'll go from there. And look, if this is not acceptable to you, there are plenty of other guys you can debate. You can debate, uh, Pastor Dean Odal, that might be a good one. Zen Garcia would be another one. Robbie Davidson. You know, there are other Christians out there who have taken a stand for flat earth from the Bible uh, that could certainly stand their own against you probably. But I'm just saying for me, it's not even worth my time. If you can't even win a debate on heliocentricity versus geocentricity, there's no point in going any further. Uh, maybe you can. I don't know. Maybe it could be a surprise upset. Prove us all wrong. I, I hope you do. Uh, but my prediction is that you will either decline or you will be defeated. Uh, that's just my opinion. Regardless, I'm only going to agree to these terms. Again, I don't have to do anything. There's nothing that's compelling me that says I have to do it. And so if I'm going to do it, these are the terms that I'm willing to do them on. First, you debate Ken Hovind. You debate uh, Dr. Robert Sunjanis. I'll take the winner. And the topics that you see on the screen is the only thing I'm willing to discuss with either one of you. So whoever's the winner, that's what I'm agreeing to debate. All right, so there you have it. There's my answer. I know you're trying to defend the Bible, and I greatly appreciate that. I'm trying to defend it also. All right, let's see. Let's, who, let's see who is really defending the Bible. That's, the, that's what's on the table. You want to know what you're in for? You want to know what you're getting into? If you're dealing with me, that's going to be it. What does the Bible teach? Debate Dr. Sunjanis first. From what I understand, he's already agreed, you know, uh, through the grapevine, if you will. Uh, both of you can respond to me at rob at testingtheglobe.com. Rob at testingtheglobe.com. Send me an email. Let me know if you're both willing to debate, whether you want to do it on my channel or somebody else's channel. I don't care. I just want to know that you have either agreed to it or not. If you disagree, Kent, you say, no, I'm not going to do it. Then Dr. Sunjanus wins by default, and we'll schedule a time for he and I to do the debate. Uh, and with that, I'll say best wishes, good luck, blessings. See you soon. Ciao.